Hey, what's going on DDO players? Axel here. Today we're gonna to talk about update 51. Update 51 was released this past Wednesday and we saw what was the biggest change to DDO in years, just in terms of the effects on epic levels in particular. So I did a video already going over all the basics. If you're not aware of what has changed, uh, then go look at that video. I'll post it down below in the description. I don't need to repeat all of that. But in summary, the game post level 20 is very different. The epic destinies have all significantly changed. The framework with how your character levels in epics, how you go through get and get your destinies, all that has changed. So epics, you know, that is levels 20 to 30, feel very different in update 51 compared to pre-update 51. So I played the update since it dropped using three different characters, three very, uh, I would say, pretty diverse characters, and I'm gonna give you a rundown of my experiences and opinion of the update. So before I do that though, there's several inclusions into this update that we didn't know a lot about or we didn't know about at all that were important, that are important, and I need to mention. Firstly, all characters level 20 and higher got a bound to character plus five lesser heart of wood. There's a lot of characters that are gonna to wanna to redo their builds after this update to take advantage of the new Epic Destinies. So that's worth noting. Next, I talked about this last video, but Epic Destinies are now free to everybody. And anyone who purchased Destiny previously got a plus one Tome of Destiny Historic, which gives one permanent act Destiny action point. I was actually expecting one, but I actually got four of them in my character's inventory. This may, I, I'm not entirely sure how what they're basing it on. I think it has something to do with how many times you've purchased Destiny. So if you purchased multiple expansions, you'll get probably get more than one. Uh, the next thing that's worth noting is there was a big buff to assassinate values on items. So assassinate items were boosted across the game. So my in-game Falconry Cleric, for example, I saw a massive plus 16 DC increase on that character. So if you're running like an Assassin Rogue or anyone using Falconry, that's something worth uh, looking there's al also several bugs fixed with falconry that affected dcs as well apparently next thing there's a lot of quests including a lot of low epic level content that are temporarily closed due to monster scaling issues so that includes house p carnival sans menectarum except for apparently the heroic only sans quests are still open sentinels chain vault of night five and six chronoscope raid so just be aware of that uh, next, th this was not, I didn't see many people talking about this, but Maces and Warhammers got a big buff if you have the Knight's Training feat. So that feat now increases the threat range of these weapons by an additional one. So that's really good. Uh, Quarterstaff similarly got a big buff if you have the Swords to Plowshares feat. That feat now increases threat range of these weapons by an additional one. There are also a few new spells that were added to class spellbooks. Uh, I'm not going to list all those, but see the release notes. But I think these were mainly um, from the old Epic Destinies. All right, but that said, the biggest change by far that dramatically changed epics is the changes to monster scaling. And this is something I was very surprised by. I was not expecting them to scale this dramatically. And pre-update 51, you know, many players, including myself, I think were rightly concerned that epic TRs and epic leveling, uh, specifically at low epic levels, would be more difficult because with the new Epic Destiny system, they are level gating various tiers of the Epic Destinies, for example. A lot of stuff is gated by level. A lot of your progression, instead of getting everything at 20 like you used to, you are now it's now spread more evenly across your epic levels. However, the developers did in fact scale down monsters and not only does it compensate for any gated power that you might lose, because of the system wide changes, it I would say more than overcompensates for this. So I was very surprised at just how much easier Epic Elite is throughout Epics. So Epic Elite, I think on all characters is gonna feel easier. The effects will vary at different levels and for different characters, depending on your builds. And I'll get into here in just a second how that how my the different characters I tested were affected. But just be aware that Epic Elite is now much more accessible. If you were a character that uh, I think like a lot of people who would go through heroics on elite, but then would need to drop down to say like epic hard when they got into epics because just because epics get harder, uh, I don't think you're going to have to do that now for the most part. I, I think a lot more players are going to be able to stay and, and stick it stick to elite throughout epics and get their favor and, and progress easier uh, through their say epic TRs or just leveling in all to 30. Uh, I tested Reaper out as well, and we'll get into that here in a bit. Uh, but the most notable changes for me with the monsters were, were lower saves and 
the biggest change was the hit points. There were a lot the hit points on monsters seems to be significantly lower. And let's get into now into my experiences on three diverse characters using completely different destinies. The characters I've been testing the update with are as follows. The first one is the one you all know, my main character, 10 plus past life, level 30, purple dragon knight, melee, uh, falconry, tier four, radiant servant, tier five, uh, melee cleric. He's very well geared. I used him primarily in dreadnought, tier five dreadnought with some divine crusader. Uh, this character had all of his destinies grinded out pre-update 51 and was my strongest character of the three. The second character I tested the update on was a third life, Tiefling, level 28, pure, favorite soul, nuker, fire, light caster. Uh, on this character, I used primarily Exalted Angel with some Primal Avatar. This character is pretty well geared. I, at level 28, I have him, I have her uh, geared out with mostly Borderlands gear, so Good gear. I mean, I probably should be using some higher level stuff at level 28, but uh, in any case, it's pretty decent gear on the character. And the character had maybe, I don't remember exactly, but maybe like half their destinies, I think a little less than half the destinies done, grinded out pre-update 51 under the old system. But I would say this this character of the three builds is, is the strongest just uh, when it comes to the builds uh, strength. I would say it's the strongest of the three builds. The last character was a, 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 an old alt I used to use a lot, and I don't play much anymore, but it's a character I wanted to pull out and play in the new system to kind of get a sense of what new players might experience. So the third character I used was a First Life, 28 point, level 26, Warforged, just Kensei, pure fighter, DPS fighter. With this character, I used primarily Fury of the Wild with some, uh, with some Unyielding Sentinel. He only had... Uh, two or so destinies capped pre-update. This is a level 26 character. He's very poorly geared, uh, has multiple gear slots that aren't doing anything for him. Uh, I think the only really good piece of gear he has is he has the Cleaver Great Axe from Caught in the Web. But other than that, you know, very poor, poor build set, uh, very poor gear set. Uh, his build is not optimized. I have a bunch of feats that are wasted because I had originally started him as a vanguard then kind of decided i want to do just a pure kensei two-handed fighter so i it's a character that needs to be lr just just not a optimized character at all so i think this character echoes more closely what a new player would experience so the quests i tested and ran i ran quests from the following so the lords of dust chain three barrel cove druids deep chain devil's gambit devil's assault storm horns and then three of the expansions Feywild, sharn and ravenloft uh, a lot of the Low epics, as I mentioned before, are closed, so I could I didn't test them out as much. So there's still a lot to be seen with the lower epics, because uh, again, a lot of those you just can't play for another. I, I think next week they'll have those up. Uh, they're thinking, but we'll see. So let's talk first about my experiences on my 28 point DPS fighter. So this character, I I um, I feel that this character got by far the biggest boost of any of these three characters in the update. So prior to 51, he struggled to solo Epic Elite, basically had to stick to hard, sometimes maybe could do Epic Elite, but needless to say, post update 51, he can solo Epic Elite without much problem. Uh, and again, this is a character, again, 28 point, first life, you know, multiple inventory slots doing nothing, outdated gear, just, you know, not, not an optimal race, just a, a character that, that definitely is not, you know, an uber character by any means. But I ran, like, Epic Elite Druid's Curse. Wasn't having much problems at all in there. Uh, Giant Hold, and I ran some, some Epic Elite Storm Horns. And a, a couple things to note with him. He has no stun gear equipped, but I was using Stunning Blow and Stunning Mobs and Giant Hold and Storm Horns without much of any problem. Uh, there are... No, I didn't run the whole chain. I just ran a, a quest or two from these, so... Um, that is to be seen, but there are still um, also no thing noting in Epic Elite, even though Epic Elite felt a lot easier, there are still some dangerous mobs. So, for example, like I died to Shotter Kai, a couple of Shotter Kai and Stormhorns in Epic Elite, for example. But overall, you know, Epic Elite was very doable for him, for sure, whereas it wasn't as much before. Uh, and he benefited a lot just because he didn't, like, the character just. I didn't play him much because I didn't want to go through the boring grind of grinding out destinies in the old system. But with under the new system, he has access to access to so much better stuff uh, now that all the trees are just there. You can just take them. And 
Let's get into now some of the destinies I used with him. So Fury of the Wild was the primary destiny I used with him. And that destiny is so good for these types of characters. These types of characters like your, you know, your DPS melees who aren't going to have a lot of healing. Uh, but this character just benefited massively from the Fury of the Wild healing. So Primal Scream is ridiculously good now. You can use it while raged. It's only, it has cost no spell points, 30 second cooldown. It gives you the effects of the heal spell when you use it. So every 30 seconds you can get a heal spell. It even does damage in CC and doesn't even have limited charges. So, you know, that was amazing, amazing kind of game changer for this character. Adrenaline is still adrenaline. Adrenaline is worse than pre-update 51 because of the longer cooldown. I mean, uh, pre-update 51, you could just pretty much spam it and mash it because the charges re recharge so fast. But it's still really good. And a couple of things that I use from Sentinel, while it can't be used while raged, Renewal is now tier two is a great and is a great self heal option for these types of melee DPS builds who lack self healing options and lack spell points. It's only five spell points to cast Renewal, and if you slot in say like a devotion item, it should be very serviceable serviceable for you not only as a self heal but also as a you know little heal you can you can throw to your your allies in your party. So next, let's talk about the favorite soul. So my uh, Nuker favorite soul, I soloed mostly, but also duoed with Aldbar. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we play every week at 6.30 Eastern time on Twitch, on my Twitch channel. One noticeable thing with nuking spellcasters and epics that I noticed is that, uh, as you might know, these types of characters, whether it's like a sorcerer or, or a favorite soul, these type of characters um, breeze through heroics, but they get to epics and they have a harder time. Uh, not that these a lot of these characters aren't so amazing in epics. It's just it's harder than heroics, uh, at least in my experience. The hit, lower hit point values were a big deal for this character. So, and I can confidently say that this favorite soul is now nuking mobs, you know, nuking through mobs like it did in heroics. The the hit point reduction was a big change here. Spells like Sunbolt that would one shot mobs through heroics. Now, when I play this character in epics, it's one-shotting again, whereas it really wasn't pre-update 51. Um, my other spells just, they take out mobs a lot quicker. You know, AoE spells like Firestorm, just, they're really, really good. I was a bit curious how the loss of Draconic Burst would affect the character, but it's fine. There are some spells like like Reborn in Fire from Primal Avatar, for example, which has been a less good but a decent, you know, replacement for, for that um, Draconic Burst loss. Uh, a couple other abilities worth noting here. Holy Presence in Angel is an extremely good Radiant Servant aura style passive heal to yourself and your allies. So you can basically get Radiant Servant aura if you if you don't have it. You can basically get it in this tree, um, which should be a great combination for say like uh, if there's like a favorite soul healer could be super super good. Now, this character was soloing Epic Elite fairly easily prior to the update, but can now definitely solo some low Reapers, and Epic Elite is a lot easier now for her. It was very, very easy. Even running stuff, like, uh, even running stuff, you know, at level, it was pretty easy. I also noticed that Extreme Challenge Dungeons, just this is just one thing worth noting here, Extreme Challenge Dungeons still do feel significantly harder. So for example, Devil's Assault, which is a Extreme Challenge Dungeon. I soloed some R1 Stormhorns on this favorite soul, but I was struggling in Epic League Devil's Assault, which is a level 21 quest, whereas Stormhorns is level 27. Uh, though part of the reason for that is that uh, Devil's Assault is full of devils which are, who are immune to fire, and it's a fire light spellcaster, so that made things a little more difficult, but still just worth noting that extreme challenge dungeons do still feel significantly harder. So let's lastly talk about my main, my melee cleric. So this character, uh, as I mentioned, was buffed a lot with the assassinate changes and DC bug fixes to falconry, so it was a little more difficult, I think, to judge this character just because... Um, he got better in certain ways that weren't necessarily due to any changes to the epic destiny. So prior to the update, this character could solo low, low Reaper in-game content. And I, I have a few actually solo Reaper videos of this character on this channel, like soloing like uh, like R3 Ravensbane and I think R4 Grim and Barrett. Uh, post update 51, I did try to solo these same quests just for comparison. So I soloed R3 Ravensbane. Uh, I actually soloed R2 Grim and Barrett, and then I soloed some R1 Sharn, R1 Feywild. And I have to say, the character feels about the same as it did pre-update 51, 
So definitely not nearly as much of a difference in power level as say your, you know, your the 28 point Warforged fighter. I think the content soloing the Reaper stuff maybe feels a little bit easier, but I, I attribute that more to my falconry attacks landing better because of the assassinate buff and not necessarily the EDs. Uh, also, another thing worth noting is this character, I think, has a lot of potential to get even better because of the three characters, he's definitely by far the least optimized for the new system. So this character was ne affected negatively the most by the changes, and I'm not saying he was negatively affected, really. It's just he was, uh, I guess a better way to say it was he was positively affected the least. How about that? But uh, there's things that with this character, I'm going to need to do a significant rework to take advantage of the new destinies. For example, uh, the character like relied on getting haste boost via a twist, and now is going to have to either take a fighter level or dip into Vistani to get haste boost. I also feel like the playstyle for this character synerg synergizes the least with the new trees. Uh, Crusader changed to more of a shield user focused. He doesn't need the healing from Fury, and if I use Dreadnought, I will need to do some gear Tetris to get my stun DC items in uh, to take advantage of Dire Charge. So there's a lot of change, a lot more changes this character needs to to make to adapt to the new system. So I think that the character does have a lot of upside going forward. But even despite all the changes that I need to make that I've not currently done to this build, he currently still feels about the same. And I think uh, again, he will be better than pre-update 51 once I rework and optimize him. And yes, by the way, I do plan on doing a revamped Melee Cleric build video when I can, so stay tuned for that. I know a bunch of people have asked me about that. So let's just talk overall. So overall, uh, I honestly think Update 51 is not an epic fail. I think it's an epic success. I think the system makes more sense. Uh, it's easier to understand. And the arbitrary, unfun, epic destiny grind from the old system is gone. Uh, new players and alts, you're going to have a way easier time getting into epics and the transition from heroics to epics for these characters is going to be way less painful. This definitely, th this new system definitely positively affects and boosts the power of your new players, your alts the most, and also soloers, I would say. But if you are having to drop to epic hard and epics, I don't think you're going to have to now. You're going to be able to go to, to epic elite. And when it comes to soloers, a lot of builds, say like your um, you're like your pure Kensei fighters can just get such good self-healing now and like the new fury tree um, Not to mention other destinies that that other ha also have healing options There's there's more healing options for these types of characters. So I think more players are gonna have more um, Success soloing if that's your thing if you want to solo like epic elite, I think it's gonna be a lot easier for you now and I think epic elite actually feels more on par with like probably like mid-level heroic epic elite that said i didn't thoroughly test a lot of the lower epic stuff i didn't run this on like a level 20 character but at least from what i can judge it feels you know significantly easier at least from everything i ran than even like like your higher level heroic epic elites like your 17 18 level 18 level 19 stuff so keep that in mind um reaper now talking about reaper difficulty reaper doesn't seem to be affected at all in much of in much of a difficulty change at least from what i experienced if, now, if I had to be a critic and try to say some things I'm concerned about with this update, uh, there's really two things. I, I first wonder if they maybe went too far with the adjustments. The, you know, Epic Elite really felt like I was surprised, even on my 28-point ungeared fighter, like how easy of a time he was having with the new uh, with, with the new system. And maybe that's because Fury of the Wild, maybe Fury of the Wild is overtuned, it's just that destiny. But I... Whatever the case is, overall, I'm not too concerned with this because Epic Elite was already really easy for veterans. It was really only a challenge for, you know, well, I, I guess I shouldn't say it was it was only easy for veterans. It was a, a challenge for, for some veterans, say, on like a not a top tier build. And I think Reaper difficulty pre-update 51 is about the same as post 51 in terms of how it feels. So I think mainly with, you know, with, with exceptions, I'm not saying that if you were you know, have a fleet was a challenge for you and you're a veteran that you're not a good player, but uh, it just mainly makes a difference, I think, for new players and alts. So that's that's the characters that are going to see the biggest change here. And that seems fine to me. I mean, it's not like challenge overall in the game seems to have gone down. It's just challenge went down in like epic elites, which were already easy for most like veteran players, especially if you're in a group. So um, Reaper is where the challenge is currently where it was pre-update 51 and where it still is post-51. So 
I think it's still there. I don't think the lack of challenge really is concern. It's just now if you want to plow through lives, you can do that really quickly on Epic Elite. I guess number two thing I might be concerned about is I still wonder if the dramatic revamp and all the time that the developers spent with revamping all of these trees, and I'm not talking about the system-wide changes, I'm talking specifically about the trees, was all that time necessary for them to revamp these trees. I think there's a lot of abilities that people love, like pre-update 51, like Master, Master's Blitz. I really miss abilities like from Crusader, like Strike Down, Zeal the Righteous. Abilities like that are gone. Did we really need such a thorough revamp of all of these trees? I don't know. Was that the best use of developers' time, or could they, could they have better spent their time on other things? I don't know. I do I do can say, though, that I, I really like the new Destinies for what they are. I think they're really fun. I think they offer a lot of different uh, options for your characters. I do think that a lot of characters are going, like my melee cleric, are going to have to kind of rethink their builds to take advantage of the new system. But if your character was over level 20, they gave you a lesser plus five heart to do that. So I think that's fair. So overall, you know, I think the update's a big success. Please post below. Let me know what you think about the update. Are you liking it? Are you not liking it? I'm having a lot of fun with it. Would be interested in reading your comments as always. Uh, as always. That's going to be it for this video, guys. I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Take care. Mm -hmm.